folks, Scott Sager with you here, RTC TV4. It's political season again. I know it feels like we just got done voting back in November, but it's time for the primaries coming up on May 7th here in Fulton County. We brought in our esteemed guest today, Mayor Ted Denton. And uh, Mayor Denton has uh, been serving in office uh, one term now, Mayor Denton? One term. Okay. Just finished three years. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, we brought him in today after uh, his first term. He is seeking re-election and will be contested in the Republican primary. So I wanted to give you the opportunity to uh, see Mr. Denton and uh, talk a little bit about Fulton County, specifically Rochester, Rochester. where you're the mayor, yeah. and uh, talk about the progress you've seen and really bring out the big question, why do you want to be mayor again? Okay, well that's a good question. First of all, thanks for having me, My Scott. pleasure, sir. Um, yeah, why be mayor? I've been asked that several times, those of you who followed me through my career, and I am a hometown boy, yeah. raised, born, everything right here in Rochester, and was fortunate enough to be able to spend 35 years in uh, the top management industrial world with the, about three different companies, and boy, I uh, had a lot of good managers mentoring to me, presidents, and such that I learned a lot from, uh, without being a name dropper, one of them that I did learn an awful lot from was Val Pemberton sure. 40 years ago, a yeah. top-notch manager out at Torx Products, and I was personnel manager, fortunate enough to be personnel manager for Val. Uh, learned lots of things, which uh, I believe prepared me for the job of mayor. Now, my predecessor uh, used to say the mayor's job was the best job he ever had. Mm -hmm. I gotta tell you something, it's not the best <laughs> job I've ever had. And I, I don't mean that in any way disrespectful because it is one of the most important jobs I've ever had. Right. Uh, but it is a difficult job. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not reporting to a president of the company or a board of directors, you're reporting to 6,200 people. Exactly. And uh, one of the, the things you learn early on, which I believe a couple things in my life experience prepared me for, one of them being a personnel manager, mm -hmm. another one being a, an IHSA official from uh, 18 years of age up for about 35 years yeah. in baseball, basketball, and softball. Believe it or not, those things prepare you sure. for the world of government. Be and I say that because both in personnel and in those officiating worlds, you have to be fair and not play favoritism. Mm -hmm. You just can't be in the world of favoritism. Right. And that's probably one of the most difficult things anyone going into a government position mm -hmm. experiences. Uh, the mayor, people think, boy, he has a lot of power. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. The responsibility is for your tax dollars. Sure. They're not my dollars. Uh, the equipment and personnel, they're not mine. I'm not a private uh, company. I am the steward for your monies. Yeah. And that's where the favoritism comes in. Uh, you have to always be looking at a situation where you're trying to benefit the greatest number of people. Yeah. And that's difficult because you get people who have their own issue Absolutely. that they want you to go take care of and sometimes you just can't. So that's one of the one of the toughest things you see as mayor. Sure. Why do I want to continue down that road? Because what you find out in that world, you have to say no about as many times as you say yes. Sure. But why be in that world? Well, again, it's my hometown. Mm -hmm. Again, I've had a lot of experience and I thought bringing that management experience to City Hall could help us progress and move forward in Rochester, perhaps at a pace that we haven't been at for a lot of years. Yeah, let's talk about the last three years. Um, a lot of things have happened in Fulton County. We've seen improvements downtown. Again, I want to be specific, Rochester. But as we look at the downtown partnership, as we look at some of the economic development that's gone on, some of the infrastructure repair that was much needed, Talk to us a little about some of the accomplishments that you feel you've done in the past three years. Well, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. And again, it is a uh, campaign. And you hear this periodically in campaigns, and it can sound trite. But I think it really fits in our situation when you ask yourself, is Rochester better today than it was four years ago? Right. And uh, I 
said early on, uh, one of the most frustrating things in government is it doesn't move as quickly as we would move in the private sector. Right. But uh, and sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes well, rapid ch rapid change in government is a scary thing. <laughs> well, it is. It is, and there's also a check and balance yeah. in place. Yeah that uh, you don't have the company, if you will, completely operating on the whims of one individual. Mm -hmm. There is a structure to mm -hmm. go through, and, and we do have a, a, a structure that is, uh, is state-mandated. Yeah. We're what they call a second-class city. Uh, now, that doesn't mean our performance is second class. That's that right. Second do. class city with first class citizens. Hey, man, <laughs> I like your thinking. I like your thinking. It has to do with our population. Absolutely. Our size. Absolutely. But as a second class citizen, there's a structure of government. Yeah. You have the mayor, you have the clerk treasurer, you have the board of works, you have the city council. Mm -hmm. And it's just like our federal government. Uh, the mayor and the clerk treasurer are administrative, the board of works handles the statutory part of the government. Okay. In other words, they deal with the day-to-day -day operations and mm -hmm. personnel Making and sure rules and, and enforcing right? compliance, <laughs> forcing laws. And then you've got the city council who makes the laws and the ordinances and then helps with the budget, the mayor's budget. Mm -hmm. So everybody has their place mm -hmm. and there are checks and balances. Yeah. And of course, as you folks know, right now the city council is up for Re-election too. Yes. Those seven members are all elected. The Board of Works is an appointed mm -hmm. group. Uh, there's three people there made up of the mayor and two of his appointees. Mm -hmm. My appointees have been Republican Rick Figlio and Democrat John Little. Mm -hmm. Don't have to uh, make those appointments by political affiliation, mm -hmm. but I felt it was valuable, and I, I, I value both of those gentlemen's consultations with me and such because Absolutely. they uh, they're good conservative folks with some good again management background yeah yeah they're seasoned in in what they've done and, and making decisions and sometimes helping you to make those hard decisions right? absolutely and then too you have to have if you're going to be a successful uh, municipal organization uh, city hall if you will you've got to have a good clerk treasurer, yes. city clerk treasurer, and we have a wonderful clerk treasurer and shot a dealer, yeah. and the relationship between mayor and clerk treasurer has to be hand in glove. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's, and, and she's Democrat, and I'm Republican, mm -hmm. but first day we sat down and said, hey, look, political uh, affiliations now go by the wayside. Sure. We have to join together to make things work the best we can right. for Rochester, right. and we've been able to do that. I mean, we these accomplishments you talk about, the um, park at 9th and Main Street, mm -hmm. the parking lot behind Juretti's, the parking lot at the old fire station. Uh, and parking lots aren't sexy and, and big no, political things, but they're important They're things. important. The uh, infrastructure improvement with the water main over on Monroe Street mm -hmm. where we had six, seven leaks within the last eight, nine years. Right. I mean, these things you, you, you need to do. You need to keep doing to put your best fa foot forward but also to make sure everything keeps working right. smoothly. Right. It's amazing. The infrastructure things are very, very important because yeah. those aren't the things that get a lot of glitter and, uh, and compliments. Uh, right. You know, uh, they're not seen. Right. But by gosh, they're visible if you get a, a leak that takes two blocks out. Right. So well, We can uh, only band-aid for so long. That's and at true. some point, somebody has to step up and make the hard decision and fix it right. That's absolutely true, yeah. and we're... We're finding that out on our project over on Fourth Street. Yeah, uh, and which uh, we much needed for much needed. decades, really. Yeah, um, some of that improvement. The, well, I was told the other day that had been on the uh, the screen, if you will, for mm. over twenty five years. Twenty five years. Yeah. And uh, so you know, we find when we start into a major, major project like that, mm -hmm. that our record keeping and such for infrastructure sure. wasn't the greatest. Yeah. So we've, we've had some hiccups over there, but I'm happy to say that's moving along very well Good. now. And uh, by the end of May, we hope to have that all wrapped up, weather permitting. Yeah, moving you know what pretty I, quickly I liked there, Mr. Mayor, is that um, as, as there was some questioning about how things were done, I didn't see anybody pass the buck. Everybody stepped up, explained the situation, and said, here's how we're moving forward. Well, we had, uh, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? If you're going to you're gonna sit in the... The seat yeah. where you're wearing the chief's hat, yeah. 
you can't just stand up and take bows. You right. have to take uh, credit for things that don't go well either. Right. I mean, that, that just comes with it. And then repair it, take care of it, right. move forward. Right. One of the jobs I had in the private sector for a number of years was a quality assurance manager. It's called process improvement and corrective action. Yeah. You can't wring your hands and, and cry over the spilled milk. You just got to make sure you don't spill it anymore. And, right. and there's a process in place so it doesn't happen. So we, 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 we try to do those things. Right. Uh, and, but, you know, right now we're doing all the recording and everything, with the infrastructure and such that we find over there on 4th yeah. Street yeah. that we didn't have before. Right. So that somebody coming after me, yep. if they end up in a spot out there, they're going to know what's there. Sure. And that's that's called process improvement. Right, absolutely. And, and an important piece of, just one of the important pieces that goes into being a mayor of a small town in north central Indiana. Well, it is. And that's just from the project side. And like I said, the clerk treasurer has been very, very instrumental in helping along with that. But the first thing that has to happen is everybody has to get on the same page. Right. The very first thing. Yeah. And they have to remember that nobody's here for their own particular interest, or shouldn't be. Right. It's got to be for the interest of Rochester, moving things forward. And, you know, I just turned 68 years old, okay? <laughs> I got a level of 68, <laughs> folks. Yeah. But I'm happy to say I'm a young 68. Yeah. I'm very healthy yet and very vibrant and have a lot of energy and can still do this stuff. And I vowed to take on a second term if I was healthy. Great. And I am because... Uh, it's important that we continue the direction we're going. Yeah. It's not only a direction of uh, goals and objectives for infrastructure and improvements and growing our community, but it's a, a process of improving the people who work at the city, mm -hmm. uh, the superintendents and the chiefs. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's establishing a system that they are comfortable in operating under mm -hmm with some guidance. Yeah. Um, it was mentioned to me uh, the first year I was in office that, boy, I was kind of a micromanager, came from one of the superintendents. And I said, well, some folks would disagree with you. If you went out and checked with people where I came from, mm -hmm. you'd find out that's called management. Mm -hmm. You have to know what's going on. Right. I'm not out there telling people where to take scoopfuls of dirt out right. or or how to, how to run the backhoe right. or, gee, where the pipe has to be laid. But by gosh, I better know about the progress of right. the of the operation of the project. Absolutely. Consequently, I've been involved in all of the construction meetings with the Fourth Street project, Great. which we have out at E and B yeah. on a weekly basis. Nice. The local company doing local, local work. work. Local Again, work. I know there were some some um, holdups, if you will, as we went through the fall last year, as we went into the winter months and. A lot of that mother nature. Uh, yeah, she's some gonna, of it mother nature. She's going to do her thing. But some of it was uh, problems with our uh, with our uh, contractors. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, I participated in choosing those mm -hmm. contractors. So now they've come around and are are working in a in a pretty good manner right now. Engineering firm had some hiccups. Uh, we had to get involved there. Yeah. Uh, so you know, if you're going to be a successful manager, you can't walk away and say that's somebody else's problem. Absolutely. You have to even at times share that project management hat. And, sure. And, and move forward. And that's part of it. For that's sure. part of it. But we've been uh, been pretty successful in that and uh, I guarantee you folks you're going to look out on 4th Street one day in the near future and say wow yeah. they did a nice job out there. Absolutely. Uh, Street lights. Yeah. I mean, we had 560 street lights. I came into uh, office and, oh my gosh, about 60 of them were out. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, there's some dark spots. Yeah. yeah. Say, yeah. And uh, what we found out was it was tough getting them fixed. Mm. And then you'd have a uh, Duke in town looking at the light and it's in the contract, or the uh, worker would say to you, Mayor, open up that light and the wires just fall apart. Oh, wow. They were over 50 years old. Right. So we, have we replaced uh, with some LEDs? Have we, we looked have. in that? We have. We okay. sat down and we've replaced uh, 560 lights. All of them? LEDs. No kidding. Well, all of them except for downtown. That's okay. the last part of our project. And that's on the goals and objective list for uh, for uh, the next couple of years to mm -hmm. get the downtown replaced mm -hmm. and nice. But uh, along with changing out those lights, 
We're saving thousands of dollars That's a year. Exactly. There may uh, be some outlay up front, but what you're saving... They're paying that, for and, themselves. Yeah, that energy efficiency yeah. is a big deal. I want to go back to something you said a moment ago. You know, people, anybody, in my opinion, can manage when things are going right. That's exactly right. And as I've told my staff a number of times, it's not what you do when it goes right. The measure of character is what you do when it goes wrong and how quickly can you respond to it and get the ship righted, if you will. You are exactly right, Scott. That's the first rule yeah. in management. Uh, the, uh, the thing about the mayor's position, uh, you can make the job just about anything you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, the results all come back to you, whatever, whatever <laughs> comes out of that. Yeah. You know, I uh, came in and I had a couple of lawsuits to deal with and we had some uh, pre-existing when you when yeah, came in. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, we had some uh, just just plain management issues mm -hmm. to straighten out mm -hmm. that uh, had been around. And I'm not not casting aspersions on the last sure, administration. Absolutely. There was a lot of uh, uh, stuff from way way back mm -hmm. when. You know, we've heard time and time again why hasn't Rochester moved forward and such. Well, those are all decisions from uh, from leaders, mm -hmm. and hopefully we're we're, we're Heading in a new direction, mm -hmm. where, like I said, the things we're doing have to be for the good of the all. Yeah. I had some goals when I when I came in, obviously, and I passed those along to all of the uh, superintendents and chiefs because they were all concerned about keeping their jobs. Sure. And I told them, I said, "Look, I've got goals, objectives, expectations mm -hmm. for each of you." And the departments met with them one on one. Now, if you tell me you can't meet those goals and objectives, mm -hmm. then I know I'm going to have to make a change. Mm -hmm. But if you tell me you can, I'm going to give you the opportunity to prove that to me. Right. But with that, something they never had before, you're going to get an annual review. Yeah. I'm not only going to see you on a regular basis, but we're going to sit down and you're going to be able to tell me yeah. so I can review you how well you did on these goals and objectives we're laying out. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, it's turned out pretty well. I, again, going back to my 35 years of experience, I learned that from Val Pimperton sure. way back when. That's called management by objective. Sure. And it, it's a plan. Yep. You, you know, if, if you don't have a plan for success, you certainly have a plan for failure. <laughs> well put, well put. But, uh, it's, so... It's truly really a partnership, too, though, isn't well, it? Well, it is. Uh, it is, like I say, it has to be a buy-in. Yeah. And what you find is... You know, I'm not going to be delusional and say everybody agrees with the direction you're going all mm -hmm. the time because some of it becomes a culture change, too. Sure. But for the most part, people like substance. Mm -hmm. They like to feel that there is some uh, thought to what you're, what you're doing right. on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not on a whim. There's a plan. No. <laughs> and and what, what's nice, it's, it's like I said before, things don't happen fast in government. Mm -hmm. But over a three-year period... Not only can the people in in uh, in the organization, but the mayor look over his shoulder and say, "Yeah, you know what? These goals, these objectives have been met." Yeah. But one of the first things I had at the top of my list sounds pretty simple, but it was uh, when the citizens of Rochester travel someplace mm -hmm. and they're asked two questions. One of them always being, "What's your name?" and the second one being, "Where are you from?" I didn't want them to have to drop their head in their eyes when they said Rochester, Indiana. Right. And uh, hold that head high. Be proud. Hold of that it. head high. Yeah. And along with that, I spent several times in several meetings the first year stopping people who would say, "Well, you know, Rochester's a retirement community." Mm. You don't want to say that over and over again because if you do, you will become that. Sure. And that's part of Rochester, but that's not all of that's Rochester. That's not what Rochester's all about. Absolutely. Yes, it's a nice place to come if you're retiring. It's a nice place to live. It's mm -hmm. a nice economical place. But we don't want to fall into that yeah. non-progressive right. mode of thinking. It, we're, uh, we're much more than that. We're much more than that. You're right. Now, when you came into office, one of the first things you did, and, and I was impressed by even the plan to do this, um, you worked with uh, some interns from uh, various colleges around here, brought them in, and you worked with them on outreach like I had never seen, even when I had my days in southern Indiana and Bloomington, um, and was somehow, you know, I was in the politics a little bit. 
I didn't see him doing the outreach that, that I know you did right away. A lot of letters went out to the state of Illinois. Yeah. And uh, I, we saw some successes from that. Well, we have, and uh, we're still working. I know everybody says, my gosh, he keeps talking about Mr. Bowley from East Peoria. <laughs> but Frank uh, operates in his own pace. Sure. Uh, he has purchased uh, land out in the industrial park. Okay. So we've got... Uh, We've got 11 acres out there that uh, Fedco received $88,000 for, and it's back on the tax rolls. And pl Frank does have plans of building out there, right. but again, it's at his own pace. Right now, he's looking at other properties in the community nice. to uh, purchase, and uh, least of all uh, where he's going to live. He's thinking about all of that. Yeah. So he has his own time frame, but uh, again... Uh, I hope to see that coming around pretty soon, and I would like to be in the mayor's seat when that happens. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but we sent out 500 letters. I did have two interns, uh, Vic Victoria Jennings and Jackie Pawlowski okay. were uh, interning with me, and they worked very hard to help me put those letters yeah. together from the uh, Illinois Manufacturing Directory. Yeah. And we had uh, some folks contact us. I actually had an economic development director from... Uh, over in uh, Wheeling, okay. Wheeling, Illinois, who uh, chastised me. <laughs> he says, "Quit, quit <laughs> recruiting." <laughs> yeah, he says. Yeah, he says, "You know, he says we are the the world of uh, Abraham Lincoln over here. You guys, <laughs> you know, you can't touch that." And I said, "Well, okay, I understand that, but I said, you know, I don't know that Abraham Lincoln would recognize your." Yeah, your world over there. Today. Good point. A lot of the, you know, there were a lot of things you saw in the news, of course, with Illinois and some of the tax problems that Absolutely. they were having, especially Absolutely. at the corporate level. They were they just implemented them. another flat tax. Yeah, for folks, it's and, terrible. And that's you know, you see the result of that. People, there's an exodus. People right. are moving their companies. They are out, they are. Um, and we're happy to take them in here because we've got the open arms. Absolutely. The, the couple of things that I see as our challenges for yeah. the future right now. Uh, the job uh, issue is is not uh, is not a huge issue because as as the state of Indiana is finding all across our our country, our uh, state mm -hmm. uh, there are jobs available. Yeah, you know we're we're at about the three percent unemployment. I was going to say that's it's pretty darn low right it now. It is. It and, is. Uh, but I don't ever remember in my thirty five years of being in that world seeing. Uh, a rate that low. Mm -hmm. So what it pretty much tells you is uh, there's a need for people out Yes. There. And I hear it all the time. We've got jobs to offer. I just took a tour out at Lau Products with mm -hmm. uh, Jillian Kramer, our chamber director, and they're bringing in a new line. No they uh, They were purchased about six months ago by another company okay. that uh, was a, a competitor that now has brought them into the into their world, nice. and there's a new line coming in that's going to necessitate about 25 people. Oh. So you know they're they're out there looking, yeah. and uh, yeah. then we uh, we also went through Advanced Magnetics, okay. and uh, you know Derek Vance took us through and uh, gave us a great tour. Well, you know Advance is kind of a quiet mm -hmm. operation. They deal with the government. Mm -hmm. They make shielding for gauges and mm -hmm. such, and very specialized mm -hmm. work. High precision work. Absolutely. We saw a fellow welding uh, with material thinner than the human hair. Mm -hmm. Welding. Mm -hmm. uh, about 17 employees, and about half of them have over 30 years in over right, there. Right. So they're going to be looking down the road. People nice. are going to be a big, big, big issue. Great. You so, work with, uh, and I know you've worked with Fedco and others. Um, work One is one here in Fulton County, right. of course. The skills they need to have these jobs. Mm hmm over the past three years, I've heard the question asked more than ever, what do you need, Mr. Employer, Mr. Manufacturer? What do you need our workforce, what kind of skills do you need them to have? And then working with others to try and fill that need on those skill sets. Yeah. And that's, that's impressive um, from a very progressive standpoint that you have to invest your time and energy to train these people to do the jobs that are coming to Fulton County. Well, you do. But, but it's a different era today than it was when I was a personnel manager back then. We were looking for people, you know, who'd come off the farms yeah. or whatever, and boy, they brought the mechanical skills sure. along with them. My gosh, you... And you, the work you, ethic. And the work <laughs> ethic. Well, that, that, that's the thing. You come in and they could do about anything yeah. right away. 
Uh, what we're seeing today is that work ethic's mm -hmm. different. Uh, and, and you hear a lot of the institutions now that are, are trying to cultivate uh, people and, and teach them how to go into the workforce. You hear about life skills. Mm -hmm. We need to teach them life skills. And for some of us who've been around a while, that sounds pretty basic. Mm -hmm. But you'd be surprised how many folks don't understand you got to come to work on time. Uh, you can't be absent. You've got to put in a good day's work. Right. You have to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, there are these things that the employers will expect. You can't use drugs. Right. I mean, there are there no are no texting things. while you're at work. No you know? texting. <laughs> By some places, you can't even have the phone That's on right. you. That's right. That's right. Leave it in the locker. That's right. Uh, it's just the skills that are the basics. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, you know, we've got some ground to make up there. Yeah. Most most of the companies I talk to say, "Hey, look, if we can get a person who has those basics, mm -hmm. we'll teach them the rest." Great, great. So um, one of the other things over the past three years is you do mayor walks, I have, which I hadn't yes. seen in the past. Perhaps have. they have done them in the past. I I wasn't aware of them, but you and citizens of of Rochester will walk the streets to say this sidewalk could use some improvement. Hey, these trees are. These roots are coming up underneath it, or hey, this property right here, we need to see what's going on. The grass hasn't been mowed, the windows are falling out. What do we need to do here? Well, that that is that is the other thing. If you're going to be uh, the mayor who's engaged and knows what's going on, you have to be there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I have been very accessible, I believe. Anybody who's tried to call me, for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, gets me. Uh, anybody who stops in the City Hall, they've got about a 80% chance of catching me. Mm -hmm. uh, although, please don't drop in unannounced if you can't call <laughs> me first. But, but we do. We take walk-in folks. Sure. And, oh my gosh, speaking of that, I am happy to report that uh, in the three years I've been there, I've had six of the clergy visit me. No kidding. Six different ministers. Of Maybe they were so, worried for you. Well, that, yeah, I began to wonder. <laughs> wow, you know. But I uh, really appreciate that no, that's because great. they all have words of encouragement and praying for me and such. Yeah. And really like that a lot. Mm -hmm. But no, uh, the walks, I drive around with our superintendents, mm -hmm. uh, Lenny Conley and I will drive around town quite a bit and just check some projects mm -hmm. out. Uh, I haven't been out of town a lot. Right. You know, I haven't. The mayor's meetings, if you will, that, you know, you can go to a mayor's meeting every month if you want to someplace mm -hmm. or Indianapolis all the time. Uh, what I have found is, and I'll be very candid, somebody who comes into the mayor's office with 35 years of management experience mm -hmm. is a little unusual. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of times you run into mayors that on the spectrum from here to here. Mm -hmm. And over here, of course, is a lot of management experience. But over here is the guy was just a good Joe and we mm -hmm. voted him in. Mm -hmm. and, so, you know, those get-together sessions for whatever length of time you're talking about mm -hmm. specifics and then the rest of the time is social, uh -huh. doesn't, it doesn't really bring much to my, my yeah, world. Yeah, networking is important, but you have to balance that to be able to be in your city exactly. managing exactly. your city. And I, and I have figured out who the core group of mayors okay. are that I can pick the phone up sure. and say, hey, what do you think of this, yeah. uh, management-wise right. or whatever? You're not shunning it, but you're putting more emphasis on being here than there. Yeah, and I get those calls. Sure, So absolutely. So spending that time away, it, it's more beneficial for me to be on site making sure things are happening in town. Nice, so. nice. Well, let's talk about the future. If you are elected again this year, where would you, anything, major goals for Fulton County, or excuse me, Rochester? Rochester? Oh, absolutely. We, uh, we, want, to, we want to continue on a path of development out on the south end of town. Sure. Uh, you know, this, last year we had Pilot join us yes. out there, and very, very soon, I mean, within 60 days, you'd see some ground being broken out there Great. for wings, etc. Great. Uh, and uh, we've also got the Redevelopment Commission working towards uh, extending a road out on Apache Drive that will connect the, uh, the area out there in front of Schnabel Tears uh -huh. and the bank with Highway 14. Oh, wow. We want to get that street in and operating. 
we believe that uh, we can add to the uh, prospects of development out there if there's an entrance and an exit to that area. Excellent, excellent, thank you. And uh, again, uh, infrastructure improvements. Sure. Uh, both of my uh, superintendents who deal in the uh, infrastructure world under the street, mm -hmm. Derek Holloway with the Water Department yeah. and Marcus Halterman with the Waste Treatment Department, part of the goals and objectives were to take a look at what our next projects are going to be. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't, you, you, can, you can create uh, these savings accounts, if mm -hmm. you will, and, and keep saving money and saving money, but you've got to have it working for you. Right. The reserves are, are only good if you're using them to work for you. Absolutely. Uh, in this business, if you're going to just save money, you might as well put it back in the citizen's pocket. It's their, their money. Right. So we've used our reserves, which we've had uh, pretty good reserve accounts, like a line of credit at the bank, mm -hmm. uh, the Monroe Street mm -hmm. Project, uh, the Water Department uh, reserves we've mm -hmm. used to, to make that work over there. Yeah. And uh, the same with the 4th Street Project. We used a community crossing grant, plus some of our reserve monies to make that happen. Then we put those monies back. Mm -hmm. uh, Again, you've got to have a great clerk treasurer. Right. She makes sure. Good job, Shada. She makes sure that your account stays at that level right. that is a comfort level for yeah. all. Yeah. But but we are working it. You always save something for the rainy you day. You always save something for the rainy it's day. It's always tempting to go deeper into it that is. fund. But. It is. But mm -hmm. if you're not working on that infrastructure, guess what? You're going to create a rainy day. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You don't want that. So. That's right. That's right. Well, so that's that's the way we've, we've operated wonderful. there. Well, and we're going to continue on that basis. Infrastructure, beautification, economic development, um, solid management of, of those that work for the city. Um, well, what other I, good things. I guess what I haven't thrown in that mm -hmm. equation, I've, I've thrown a lot of information out here, but the other thing that you're, you're, you're saddled with is fiscal responsibility. Yes, sir. We've done everything without increasing the tax rate Absolutely. in Rochester. Oh my gosh, five, six years now. Wow. It's all, it stayed pretty, uh, pretty stable, mm -hmm. same place. So we're not taking any more tax money from you to do these things. Just your diligence in how you are using the funds you have. Right. And then on the side of the utilities that we just talked quite a bit about, of course, that isn't tax supported. That's when you go down and pay your water bill, your you're contributing to that side, the water department and the waste treatment department. Mm -hmm. We haven't increased those rates in nine years. Wow. wow. Yeah, and I know that's unheard of. Actually, uh, our accountant uh, came and talked to us about that. I'm Bond Associates, mm -hmm. and they deal with a lot of people. And say, you know, you guys might want to, you're doing well. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, one of the objectives we had was to try and manage the organization so that the Dean's milk loss mm -hmm. didn't hit us real hard right. in that area and we've been able to do that. I, I credit Marcus and Derek quite a bit. Yeah. They, uh, you know, Like they tell you out in the private sector when you go to a customer and you say, gee, I'm going to have to have a price increase. He says, no, no, make that up in process improvement. Right. Well, I'm happy to say that our folks have worked in that manner. And, That's and, impressive. And so we've been able to keep the rates where they are. But our consultants have said, yeah, you know, you might want to just have a modest increase just mm -hmm. to let people know that you got to have an increase once in a while. Mm -hmm. And I said, are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> I said, again, in the private sector, that customer is saying to you, yeah. I want a 3% decrease. Yes. Yeah. And you're going to get it through process improvements. Process improvements. Yeah. Very, yeah. Uh, I so, like the phrase. So we operate, again, we want to bring the business principles to City Hall mm -hmm. and not just run it as government as usual. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, well, well done. And uh, I can't thank you enough for being here on RTC TV4. This is for you. This is so you get to see the current mayor. He's a candidate here for uh, mayor of Rochester in the May 7th primary coming up on the Republican ticket. And um, I'm sure we'll have uh, all the candidates in uh, to show you their platform, if you will, and just honestly just to have a conversation and talk. We've had a lot of compliments over the past few years from doing these interviews, and it's just a conversation, and I like that, and I can't thank you enough for coming in and doing that. Well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk about Rochester yeah. and what we're doing and where we're heading, and 
uh, as you might be able to tell, I am kind of excited about it. So that's another yeah. reason I like doing the job. Yeah. I like seeing the improvements. One thing I didn't mention, why I'm in yeah. this too, uh, I didn't serve in the military. Right. And uh, uh, I had a brother who served, I had my father served, my uncle served. Uh, I was fortunate enough in the Vietnam era, era to get a high number mm -hmm. in the lottery. That's how they chose people mm -hmm. to go to Vietnam. So I could stay in school and not mm -hmm. have to go to Vietnam. Some of my friends did, some of them didn't return. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's weighed on my mind a bit. Sure. I mean, I, I felt, hey, somewhere along the line, uh, especially with the tools you've been granted in the, the management, mm -hmm. uh, industrial management world, you need to give some of that back. Give, do some service. Yeah. So I Th figured, This from uh, a guy who was, uh, you, you coached Little League for I don't know how many years, you refereed, you've been on councils, you've been on committees, you've been on nonprofit boards, and you're still feeling a little guilt about yeah. not giving enough. Well, it, it, and it's that's the great. military thing and the, go the government side. Mm -hmm. The government mm -hmm. side. And I respect, boy, the veterans all know. I respect Absolutely. our veterans a lot. Absolutely. Um, we've got a lot of things going on in this, this country right now that I know make our veterans just just shrink and yeah. shake their heads. We're a little divisive right we're now. We're a little divisive we? right now, and we need to we need to boost that back up. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I wear the I wear the mayor's pin every day. The the, yes, the American flag and the Indiana flag. I carry it inside my calendar. <laughs> I got the flag right there, because uh, you go places every once in a while. And I always like to start meetings out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Right. Sometimes I have to bring my own flag. Bring your own flag. To do that. Oh, that's but great. But it's important, mm -hmm. especially in, in, in our government world, that we remember that's why we're there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I appreciate the opportunity uh, to talk about those things. Oh, that's, that's great. Uh, it's heartfelt and sincere, and I appreciate that coming from you. Uh, I'm sure I'll hear rhetoric uh, as I continue my interviews through this uh, process. But um, to you, I want to say thank you for what you've done and for your service. Um, you know, whatever happens in the election, I think you've served well and, and uh, brought pride to Rochester, Indiana, and I think we can hold our heads up. So um, wherever that takes us and wherever that leads, I would say uh, just a heartfelt thank you from the folks that you've led over the past few years. I thank you, Scott. All right, folks. Well, you've got Mayor Ted Denton again. The primary is May 7th here in Fulton County. Um, real quick, we can uh, absentee vote, register to vote. Let's talk absentee a little bit about votes. that. Yes. Absentee yes. voting starts when? Uh, April the seventh uh, uh, or eighth. Okay. Uh, April, yeah, I believe. Okay, so yeah. right, right around April seventh, you can do that up at the clerk's office here in uh, Fulton County, right, in the courthouse, and uh, you can go see Terry up there, or any of the ladies will take care of you. And then registration. If you need to update a registration, now's the time now's to be doing that. Now's the time to do that. Okay. Yeah, go into the clerk's office, register to vote. If you think you're uh, not registered, if you think you need to update your registration uh, because you haven't voted for a while, check that out at the clerk's office. Take your picture ID. Mm -hmm. I would mention to you that a lot of times people don't think the primaries are very important. Mm -hmm. uh, this year uh, at the local election, they are very important. Mm -hmm. Some uh, contested races for sure. There are. Uh, the Democrats, uh, the primary election is, is where the two parties get a chance to sure. choose their candidates who are going to go forth for the general election in November. Mm -hmm. So it's like the first cut of the athletic game. <laughs> it really yeah, is. Yeah. And uh, the Democrats do not have anybody contested on their, their ballot. Okay. Uh, uh, the Republicans, there's two races. There's the race for mayor mm -hmm. and the race for uh, council at large. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to make uh, your voice known mm -hmm. in those two areas, you have to ask for the Republican ballot. Okay, so... If somebody out there, and I don't want to get too detailed on this or, or pretend that either of us are true experts, election experts, yeah. but um, if you are an independent or a Democrat and they want to put their two cents in on the Republican primary for either council or mayor, can they do that? They can. And just because you ask for that Republican ballot when okay. you're going to vote in the primary doesn't label you as a Democrat. You can always yeah. go back and vote 
Democrat right in the next election. You can, you can go to the uh, elections there, the primary elections. Yep. You can ask, ask for, for a the Republican, Republican ballot. ballot. Uh, and you only get one. So. Yeah, they're not going to give you both <laughs> ballots. <laughs> but again, uh, the Democrat ballot, those folks have made the first cut. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to decide there. They'll, they'll go right through to the <laughs> November election. Great. Good information there. I know that you need to know that out there. If you have further questions about that, you're welcome to call the clerk treasurer. Uh, here in Fulton County, they can explain some of that to you. Or actually, it would be the clerk's office up at the clerk's courthouse, office wouldn't it? The courthouse, yeah. yeah. Leave clerk's Shada alone. She's busy making yeah. sure our numbers are. are in oh, I'm sure Shada would have an opinion, but he probably <laughs> ought to call the clerk's office at uh, at the courthouse. We'll make sure that happens. Well, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for watching here on RTC TV Four, where we're going to have more interviews as we go through this election season. Remember, May seventh is the date. Get out there and vote. We always like to see the numbers improving, especially during the primaries where you've got some contested races. Well, if I could just throw in as a Please. closing remark here. Again, uh, we don't want to take voting for granted. Right. Uh, it, 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 I spoke of the veterans. I spoke of uh, people of service. There are people all through history who have given pretty much their all in a lot of cases. So we can go May the 7th and cast that ballot. The last full true measure of devotion. Yes, right? yes. And uh, it is important folks, I do encourage you to get out. This is in my opinion a civic duty. It is part of your responsibility as a citizen of the United States and of Fulton County. You need to exercise that right if nothing else for the honor of those who gave you that right. If you don't think it's something that's a, a right and something that is rare, ask the folks from Venezuela. Amen. Amen. So, uh, again, we like slow-changing government sometimes, yes, sir. don't we? Yes, sir. Well, again, uh, Mayor Denton here at RTC TV 4. We'll see you next time, and uh, thanks again for watching. Thank you, Scott.